projector and the communications are down. I can't even contact the plumbers for help. Oh, that's Nelly. That tourist trap is bound to have a communication system I could use. And I might as well catalog the planet while I'm there. It is my job after all. all, all, all. Hi, Taurus. Get into place. Good evening, extranet and multidimensional travelers. Welcome back to And Beyond, where we plunge into the void and explore our ever-expanding multiverse. I am your host, the R300 Orion IT Systems Model V04, but you can call me Horus. Today, we'll be exploring the paradise planet of Znelli. Planet Zanelli has partnered with Louis Vulpon to bring you All Fit Outfits. Did you plan a last minute vacation with nothing to wear? Maybe your planet's culture lacks the right clothes for relaxing climates? Or do you just want to dress up for fun? Well, with All Fits, we have a fashionable line of tourist attire for everyone. Thanks to advanced micro adaptive fiber optic threads embedded in our trademark comfortable fabric texture, finding a funky fit for you will never be easier. Say goodbye to planning out your wardrobe. Because with reasonable prices and multiple shops located all over the planet, just fly on down and get everything you need right here on Zanelli. If you're tiny, gigantic, aquatic, electric, have 23 limbs, or no limbs at all, you can count on all fits to cater to each and every creature in the galaxy. All fits outfits, where every size fits all. My antenna's broken. How did that even... Whatever. Moving on. Please keep all appendages inside the portal at all times, and remember, do not party with lizards unless you're ready to get slizzard. Snelly, the most vivacious planet of its system. On its surface, it is a multicultural paradise, featuring a diverse set of biomes all commingling in a seemingly perfect homeostasis. Due to the planet having no axis tilt, these biomes retain their climate stability year-round, making for one of the universe's most reliable and beautiful vacation spots. Znelli is home to ten notable subspecies of reptiles known as Manzardil. These collective species are named after their planet-wide shared belief system, believing that each of their peoples were created in the image of one of the various forms their multi-elemental lizard god Manzardil will take. With ten species, we do have a lot of info to collect, but we should have some fun along the way. Starting at the highest point of the planet, we arrive at the Polar Peaks, home to the Polar Manzardil. Polar Manzardil are quadrupedal reptiles standing between 4 to 6 foot tall. Despite their icy appearance, they are extremely warm-blooded creatures, living in these frozen mountains purely for the sake of comfort. Unlike most Manzardil, they possess an extremely strong hypothermus. The hypothermus is an organ attached to the esophagus that is used to help regulate the bodily temperature externally by means of expectorating. For Polar Manzardil, they breathe in water vapor through their gills and freeze it as they exhale, helping them cool down quickly. Manzardil also possess throat pouches attached to these gills they can use for storage. The polar species specifically store water to release later as freezing pressurized blasts. Many use this ability for sculpting large ice sculptures, such as the well-known ice artist Chil Huli. Being herbivores, polar manzardils assist primarily on crops of cold-resistant root vegetables like frost tubers and sporadish. These vegetables, similar to Earth's potatoes, contain a chemical called solanine that when consumed can cause extreme gastric distress. The manzardil are famous for their unique farming technique called steam rooting. Planting their crops over natural cave hot springs, the harvestable sections of the vegetables are cooked by the steam as they grow breaking down the solanine and making it safe and ready for consumption at harvest. Wow, they look so good it makes me wish I had a digestive system. Moving down the mountain, we arrive at Plummet Ridge, home to the Talus Manzardel. 
Talus manzardel are large quadrupedal reptiles standing between 7 to 11 foot tall. These manzardel are more moderately warm-blooded and rely more on the chilling winds of their high-altitude home to keep cool. These talus manzardel live deep in mountainous caves that were originally dug out for mineral mining. Thanks to their advanced echolocation, they've managed to mine ores while leaving very little impact on their beautiful natural cave systems that they now host guided tours in. Talus Manzardel have very tough stone-like scales. These scales paired with their echolocation make hunting a breeze for this omnivorous lizard. They will cling camouflage to the slope of a mountain waiting for flying prey such as Raptera to pass. Once detected, the Manzardel will leap off of the mountain to catch the prey mid-air. Then proceed to plummet back down the mountainside safely protected by their scales. This tactic really gives new meaning to bait and tackle. <laughs> Arriving at the bottom of the mountain, we find ourselves at Sluice Slopes, a muddy river gully created by the mountain slush runoff, and the home to the Meyer Manzardel. Meyer Manzardel are small bipedal reptiles standing between 2 to 4 foot tall. Being warm-blooded, they use the mud created by the mountain slush runoff to keep cool. With this runoff overtaking the majority of their home, they've trained their gills to work reciprocally. By breathing in mud via their gills, they can expel it from their mouths, and then in turn, by funneling mud into their mouths, they can then propel it out of their gills, granting them the ability to maneuver around quickly with pressurized blasts of mud. Seeing as this species are detritivores that mainly feed on the nutrients in soil, they seem to be very happy spending their days eating mud. They are also equipped with very sleek, smooth scales that make slipping around very easy for them. They use these slip and slide scales to host activities such as mud surfing, which, despite the mess, does look very, very, very fun. Moving into the more densely populated sections of the planet, we arrive in the lush jungles of Haktu, home to the Tropic Manzardel. Tropic Manzardel are quadrupedal reptiles standing between 5 to 6 foot tall. Unlike the previous three species, Tropic Manzardel are moderately cold-blooded. They're hypothermous radiating heat rather than cold. But living in such an already warm and muggy environment, it is mainly used just for their specialized expectorating. For generations, the omnivorous Tropic Manzardel have fed on a special fruit called Amakian. This fruit contains extremely high levels of starch, so that when it is jammed and heated, it becomes an enjoyable, thick, viscous, sticky paste comparable in consistency to the earth dessert mochi. Through generations of consuming this Amakian jam, the Tropic Manzardel would learn to pack their throat pouches with it and use the heat from their hypothermis to manipulate and expectorate jelly-like webbing. They use this webbing to hunt large jungle insects, but also to create drums and string-like instruments. These custom instruments give off a very unique, distorted, jumpy sound that is the staple of the Tongere music genre. You know what they say, nobody can make Tongere music without knowing how to Amakian jam. <laughs> Making our way out of the jungles, we find the longest stretch of beach in four galaxies. This is the Sand Skirt, one solid coastline that rounds the entire planet's circumference, and is the home of the coastal Manzardel. Coastal Manzardil are quadrupedal reptiles reaching lengths of 7 to 8 foot long. These warm-blooded Manzardil beat the heat by spending their days wading the soothing waters of their beachfront home. Similarly to their mud-encrusted cousins, Coastal Manzardil use their gills reciprocally to propel themselves through the ocean at high speeds. It's a very common sight to see a Coastal Manzardil launching themselves high into the air to capture flying prey, then proceeding to drag them under the water and hold them there until they drowned. Typically feeding primarily on fish, these lizards really like eating birds. Which makes sense, given that the coastal manzardel are one of the two purely carnivorous species on Snelly. 
<sighs> Despite their literal bloodthirstiness, coastal Manzardel are extremely laid back and will even be found asleep drifting along rocking waves. Though they spend the majority of their time in the water, they cannot actually breathe underwater. They are just very skilled at holding their breath, only needing to surface for air once every few hours. Ironically, many theorize that the low level of oxygen intake they have is why they seem so airheaded. Plunging deeper into the lower recesses of the oceans, we find ourselves in the night sea. This underwater series of sea note caves are littered with translucent domes of thick volcanic glass. This strange underwater windowed cave system is home to two species of Manzardel, the Submar and the Subtur. The Submar Manzardel are extremely large aquatic lizards, measuring to be about 17 foot long. Non-water breathing, they only need to surface for air when sleeping. Due to the combination of being cold-blooded and residing primarily in chilling deep seawater, the Submar Manzardel's hypothermus is in constant extreme heat, bringing the water around it to a near boil. They also use this heat to melt rock, helping them explore more subterranean caves. Carbon dating on their obsidian-like scales dates the average Submar Manzardel roughly 4 to 5,000 years old. It is believed that they may have been the first species of Manzardel to exist. Residing in the subterranean cave systems underneath the ocean, we find the Subter Manzardel. The Subter Manzardel are bipedal reptiles standing about 2 to 3 foot tall. Cold-blooded, they rely mainly on the heat of volcanic vents and glass tappers to keep warm. Comparative biological research suggests that they are an extremely underdeveloped species. This is supported by the fact that their diet primarily consists of a low-nutrient bioluminescent fungus known as Boglo. However, an interesting adaptation of their fungal diet is that they have developed a perfect 2020 night vision and voluntary bioluminescence. Both species work together symbiotically, exploring the deep dark depths of uncharted channels and caves. The Samar provide the heat to keep them warm on their journey, and the Subtur provide the glow to light the way, making them tr truly partners in brine. <laughs> Rounding up through the cave systems, we emerge in the middle of a fung gully, a small fungal forest formed betwixt conjoined mountains. In a sense, they are Zanelli's armpits. In factuality, they are the home of the fung manzardel. Fung manzardel are quadrupedal reptiles standing two to three foot tall and are covered in bioluminescent oil patches. Moderately cold-blooded, they love the damp and muggy environment of their gully, not only because the temperature, but also for the delicious fungus, including drool caps, hot heads, glow grubs, and many, many more. It's a diverse smorgasbord of spores and bores and more. more. Similar to their tropic cousins, they've learned to pack their throat patches with their favorite food. However, in their case, it creates a potent melting pot of a dozen different fungus to make up a powerful hallucinogenic oil. <laughs> Being herbivores with no need to hunt, they primarily use this bioluminescent oil to make interactive art, such as the acclaimed artist Salazar Druli. If you get close enough to breathe in the fumes of one of these paintings, you can see the art truly come to life. In a psychoreactive sense, of course. Stumbling out of the gully, we wander our way to Fire Iron Dunes, a vast desert of iron-enriched obsidian mountains, and the home of the Torrid Manzardel. Torrid Manzardel are quadrupedal reptiles measuring 6 to 7 foot long. Cold-blooded, they use the heat from their hypothermus to expectorate flames and superheat their long poker scale fins. Being the second purely carnivorous species on the planet, they will use their long body to quickly slither through sand pursuing only prey with, with, with flammable fur or feathers. 
These prey specifically because they, quote, burn faster and taste better. Ugh. Because the overall temperature in the desert drops very drastically at night, they will bury themselves in sand to sleep. This traps their body heat in, similar to a ground oven. They will then sleep well into noon to make sure that the terrain is warm before they emerge. So if you're taking a morning stroll, you may want to watch your step. Finally, we make our way up the sizzling slopes of the Totem Cradle, a tract of volcanically cracked terrain that is believed to be the birthplace of all Manzardel, and is currently the home of the Slag Manzardel. Slag Manzardel are bipedal reptiles standing between 7 to 9 foot tall. Being extremely cold-blooded, they regularly consume large amounts of pumice rock and use the extreme heat from their hypothermis to melt and store the molten rock in their throat pouch. It can then be dispensed as magma bubbles of various sizes and densities. Whether it's for construction, craftsmanship, or power generation, these bubbles can be extremely useful. This area is still very popular with tourists, because once a week they are known to perform a ritualistic show at the mouth of the cradle. dancing and releasing thousands of flaming bubbles into the night sky, each symbolizing a life that the god Manzardel helped create. It is religiously believed that Manzardel himself rests in the base of the totem cradle, hence its name. It is said that he lies slumbering until his children need him the most. Zanelli, a beautiful place to live for sure. And thankfully, we had to visit. Make sure you plunge back into the void with me sometime and join me on another extraterrestrial exploration. This is Horus, signing off. <laughs> what the heck, the heck was that? The recreant idol hidden away still. Max is all. Deserter of the Domain. Deity to this lavish planet of bastards. I am Adwitya, and all manner belongs to me. I remit what is rightfully mine from you and your wasteful creations. Here? Taurus, you need to fly back to Plumber HQ and get help. Help. I'm stuck planet bound because my systems are damn, 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 totally fucked. Apologies, my language filter's broken too, okay? Now, contact Commander Ben 10 10 and Innocent. He is the, he's the only one that can stop and stop at Weicha. Oh. Taurus was destroyed. No, not to worry. I can pick up another one when I get back to base. If I get back to base. There's hundreds of them. And hundreds of me. But they're not me. I'm me. I... I don't want to be destroyed. I don't, I don't want to be destroyed. I don't want to be destroyed. I don't want to die. 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 I don't want to die.